Hey, badass business owners. Today, we're going to talk about the basics of your profit and loss income statement, because let's face it, it can be very confusing because it looks like just a bunch of numbers on a page. But I want to let you know that you need to know your business numbers and your profit and loss is your business's report card. So it's really important you understand it because at the end of the day, it is the piece of the puzzle that helps you unlock your profits. So with that, let's take a look. Now there's going to be a couple different versions of a PNL that are out there. Don't get hung up on the way that yours happens to look. They all have the exact same five key sections. And that's what we're going to take a look at. So you know what those five sections are. The first section is the income line. And the income section is going to be called either income, sales, or revenue. Basically, it's all the money that is coming in to the business. So if you're receiving money in any way, shape or form, it's going to be right here under the income section. Once again, it'll say sales revenue. Everyone is a little bit different, but most of the time it's going to be called income. The second section that you need to worry about is your cost of goods. This is one of the big ones, and this is probably where most people make their mistakes. And on other videos, I dive into this section in detail to show you where those mistakes happen, but we'll take a look here real quickly. Cost of goods is sometimes called COGS. So when you hear people talk about COGS or COGS, what they're referring to is the cost of goods sold. And this is all money spent on materials, ingredients, packaging, and labor that is spent on creating the product or providing the service. There's different types of labor, and I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. But for cost of goods, just think of it this way. If it is part of providing the product at all, either making it or providing it if you're a service-based business, it's going to be under cost of goods. Because really what you're selling as a service is the actual service, which is the install, which is the service. If you have products and you make those products, then you're going to have a higher cost of goods because you're going to have to include the labor because you cannot make it without that person. Uh, if you just turn around and you resell it, then it's just the original cost to you to purchase that material. Now, let me explain the labor hours a little bit better here, because some people have them under cost of goods, some people have them under expenses. And the right answer is both, depending upon what you're using it for. Your cost of goods section is going to have the labor if the product or service cannot be done without the labor. So for example, if I buy a bicycle and I turn around and resell it, I'm only going to have the bicycle part itself I'm not going to have labor because nobody had to put that bike together. But if I buy the parts to the bike and I have to have labor to assemble the bike, then yes, it's going to be included in cost of goods. So the labor would be included. If I install ceiling fans, not only am I going to have the ceiling fan if I provide it, but I'm also going to have the labor hours to install it because what people are paying for is the install of the ceiling fan. However, it'll go under expenses if that labor supports the business. For example, it's office, cashiers, schedulers, someone who's doing the bidding, people who basically are not necessarily installing the product or creating or making the product. So you will have labor in both areas depending upon what it is. And by the way, this also includes you because you are a lot of times the only employee in your business or you are one of the employees in your business even though you don't necessarily have a payroll. Because remember, you get paid two different ways in your business. The first one is as an employee for work done, which I call it at a fair wage. You're not paying yourself 50 bucks an hour. If you would hire someone off the street for 15, 20, 25 bucks, you're going to pay yourself as an employee in your business at a fair wage. And then you also get paid as the business owner. However, your business owner pay really doesn't occur until the business has a profit. And then you are paid out of the success of the business through the profits. And I'm going to show you more on that here when we get to that section. So when you're looking at it, keep that in mind. Now, the third section is a little tiny line that says gross profit. And your gross profit is basically your sales minus your cost of goods. It's the money that's left over for all other business expenses, retained earnings, taxes, and owner's draw. So what you do is you just take your sales minus those cost of goods, and that's going to tell you what your gross profits are. So a lot of times when you hear people talking, they'll talk about their gross profits. What they're referring to is the money they've made prior to paying anything else that they owe in the business. So gross profits, some people have a very high gross profit line. Some people have a very low. What matters is what you take home at the end of the day, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. Now, let's just take an example here in this particular PL. It's $36,000. We're in sales. The cost of goods were $17,000, which means their gross profit is the $18,873. So that's basically how gross profit line works. The next big section is the operational expenses. And this is going to have a lot of stuff under it, as you can see here. It's basically going to be all the other operational expenses to run 
the business. So whether it's advertising, it's repairs and maintenance to the truck, to your equipment, credit cards, insurance. Now you'll see payroll on here. It's not only for the people that are part of payroll, but you're going to have a payroll service in a lot of cases, in which case all the fees and taxes and things that you have to collect for payroll will be an operational expense because those are parts of owning the business for running the business, which is why they're under operational expenses, rent, small equipment, uniforms, stuff like that. So basically it's a catch-all for everything else that has is not part of your cost of goods. Now, the final section is called profits. And this is the line we all love to see and we wanna see a nice healthy one. Uh, sometimes it'll say profit, sometimes it'll say net income. Just know that they are the same thing. At the end of the day, they are the business's profits. Now keep in mind, it's the money the business made not necessarily you. Yes, you are the business, but the business still has business to do, if you will. All right. The business has to spend this money on a few things before you can start taking money out of it. And that's where this comes in. It's going to go to three things. First off, you've got to pay your taxes. It is money the business pays on the profits of the business and any money that you take out of the business because most of you are solopreneurs and you're going to take money out of the business so you're going to owe taxes so you need to make sure that you set aside enough taxes out of those profits to pay for all those taxes the next thing you're going to have to do is have some retained earnings and this is money that you take out of those profits and retain it in the business to invest for the future growth like maybe you need to buy some more inventory maybe you need to build up three to six months of emergency fund, whatever the case may be, you want to buy a special equipment. Those are retained earnings. That's money you keep in the business. And then if after you saved your money for your taxes and your retained earnings, there's money, then there's what's called an owner's draw. And this is the money that you take out of the business. Some people choose to leave all of the money in the retained earnings. Some people choose to take all of the money. The one mistake you want to make sure you don't make is that you spend all the money that is supposed to be for taxes. Please make sure you take at least 20 to 30% off the top of these uh, profits. Set it aside in a separate account because it's going to save your hide. It's one of the biggest mistakes small business owners make is they don't pay their taxes. So you want to make sure all those profits you're saving for that. Now, your PL statement is basically the flow of money through your business. As you can see, we started off with sales, then we went to cost of goods, and then what we did is we took off the expenses, and finally we ended up with our profits. This is the number one calculation that I tell people that they need to know. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. You're gonna notice already that this is how the flow of your P&L goes. I don't have gross margin in here because all it is doing is telling you a snapshot between the sales and the cost of goods. The reason I want you to memorize sales minus cost of goods minus expenses minus profits, those were the big buckets of where money was coming out of the business as it was flowing through the business. And what we saw is it's a huge deal on your profit and loss statement. But guess what? When you price your products and your services, your PL will hold the key to you pricing correctly because when you spend money, since your top line is sales, every sale you make, every product you sell, service that you sell, will have the same flow of money through it. So if you always remember sales minus cost gives minus expenses equals profits, you can actually set your pricings to ensure that you're going to have some profit. It's also a great tool to see if you can afford something, like if you wanna hire some people, get, get some equipment, some advertising, it's another great tool that you can use. And by the way, I have a bunch of videos on your PNL where I walk through each of these different scenarios to show you how you can use this but today, all we're trying to do is make sure that you can understand the basics of your profit and loss statement. And just remember, you have these four sections, right? You have your sales minus your cost of goods minus your expenses equals your profits. And yes, we can sit there and we do have, let me get my little mouse over there. We do have the gross profit line. All it is is just letting you know the difference between these two here. But your four main sections are sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals those profits. And if you're a small business owner, you might watch some other videos and there's a lot of other little lines in here. Uh, trust me, at, at your size, you're not dealing with all those. The only things you really need to remember are sales minus cost of goods minus expenses minus profits. When you start to hit the big time, we can teach you about all those other fun lines that you hear, the IBITAs and all that other stuff that people talk about. Uh, it's just basically this thing on steroids and you can learn that as you become bigger and bigger. But for now, the vast majority of you and 99% of what you do anyways is sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals 
profits. Uh, now let's take a quick example of the pricing. Like I was telling you, let's say you sell something for $50. You know, your cost of goods run you about $25. You know that you need to set aside about $10 in expenses. Your PL, by the way, will tell you that because your PL will have a percentage of what your expenses typically run, in which case you can take the sales price of $50 times that percentage. In this case, let's say their expenses ran 20%. This business owner knows that $10 is going to have to be set aside to pay their expenses. Now they know that their profit on this particular item is going to be $15. I know that sounds really confusing if you're watching my videos for the very first time, but I promise you if you watch the profit and loss videos and the pricing videos, this will make a lot of sense. Uh, now your PL, it's basically telling you the story of your business. At the end of the day, you don't just hand a book over to a kid and tell them to read it. No, you're going to show them, teach them the alphabet. You're going to teach them how to spell a word. Then you're going to teach them how to put a sentence together to read a book. Well, your numbers are the same way. We want to make sure that you understand those numbers because once you understand the numbers and how they look on that piece of paper and what they're telling you, you then can start seeing the story of your business and it starts telling you all kinds of really, really cool stuff. Matter of fact, you can get your PL by month. You can do it by year. You can compare this year to last year, month to month, and it's going to tell you all kinds of really cool stuff about your business and how you can make more money because you can look for trends. You can compare the year prior. You can view seasonality, you know, when your best months are, when your lowest months are, you can set aside profit for one time of the year versus another. It's really cool. It really is the key to you uh, earning more profit. So it's really important that you understand your profit and loss statement. Uh, don't complain if you don't have any profits. If you don't have any profits and you're not doing anything about it, then that's really on you because you really need to understand your business numbers. Because after all, didn't you want to create a business, not just a job? And when you don't know your business numbers, really all you're doing is creating a job for yourself because yeah, you're making sure you get paid, but you don't really know if the business is making you any money. Uh, you're just ensuring that you're getting paid as an employee. And we want you to be business owners and really understand understand how that works. And by the way, like I said, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, all that cool stuff. But more importantly, make sure you watch some of these other videos that are on the screen where we take a deeper dive into your profit and loss statement, and it's going to help you out tremendously. I'll see you on the next video.